five, ten, one hundred and seventy. Last week he had five extra points, so he's certainly a proficient kicker. I don't know how well he'll do on field goals, but we'll, we'll see. The other thing is that sophomore quarterback you were mentioning had two touchdown passes last week. So. Yeah, we saw him throwing a few in practice. So they have uh, some uh, throwing plays off of that uh, wing tee. A lot of misdirection, and uh, as I say, East Chester might be in for uh, an interesting game. Well, Coach Luciano certainly has alerted them to that fact, so I'm sure they're ready. Okay, we await Belusi's kickoff. And we are underway. Comes down to Honorata's side. Mike grabs the ball. On the 15-yard line, Mike's still going with it. They try to strip the ball, but Honorata, nice run back up to it, right on the 35-yard line, where East Chester will start. Very nice job by Michael Honorata. There was a wedge of blockers on the left-hand side, and he moved right alongside of them and did a very nice job. So good run back by Michael Honorata. And it looks like he broke the initial tackle. East Chester will line up with Maldari, quarterback. He's number 17. Spade, number 44, and Fiorello in the backfield with him. Fiorello, 46, he's the tailback. Wingback is Honorado. We'll see him going in motion quite a bit. He's number 20, and we'll give you the offensive line and the Pleasantville defense shortly. Here's the first play of the game. It's first and 10. Maldari over the ball. Maldari hands off to Fiorello. Fiorello finds a hole and moves for about four yards. Nice, nice job by the left side of the East Chester line, springing uh, the halfback, Fiorello, for at about six or seven yards. And the left side of the line is uh, Vaccaro, uh, 66, Lucenti, 64. Lagana over the ball. He's number 20. Chilero, the right guard, 52. That's John Chilero, brother Joe, 61. He's the right tackle. Second down, about uh, six to go. Hand off up the middle to Spada. He stopped. And he stopped by, uh, looked like he stopped by Belusi. That is correct. Number 15. The other thing that gets lost in a shuffle, besides the juggernaut of offense that Pleasantville had last week, they held their opponent to minus 18 yards for the game. So that's quite a defensive effort, no matter what the quality of the opponent is. The ends for East Chester, the tight end is Joe Rainey, he's 81, and Joey Forgione starting at uh, split end, number 35. Here's a third down play, and it uh, looks like this may go against East Chester, but let's wait for the, wait for the officials. Don't give numbers, folks. Illegal motion versus East Chester, so this will put him back five yards, and it will be a third down play with about probably nine to go. We're here from uh, the uh, Jarvis Bowl, and uh, it's a pleasure to do a game at the home field. We have all the amenities. We have a table, courtesy of uh, Dom Ciceri. We have our spotters up here, and of course, Dave Gar Gargani is not uh, hanging on the stands like he would be on a and monkey bar. And we're not in enemy territory. Either. Yeah. <laughs> And we can hear the Eagle faithful right under us. Big third down nine play early in the game. Maldari fakes. Has Borgione out there, but it's a little bit overthrown. He was covered on the play by number 16, Mahoney, and number five, Wright, who are the uh, defensive backs. I have to say, Jerry, last week the Ards League folks were very, very uh, helpful and very cooperative with us. So uh, thank you to the folks in Ards League. Also the Panthers. That's right. So we'll be seeing Maldari going back in punt formation. The ball is on the East Chester 35-yard line. And back for Pleasantville, number 15, Beluzzi, and number 20. Number 20 is Servini. So they have their backs back. It's a high one. Fair catch called for by Beluzzi. He's covered by Forgione. Forgione almost got called for a penalty. He corralled him, but uh, the... Uh, Field judge right over there said, uh, okay, no penalty. That's what they're going to have to do. Good hang time on the punt, prevent Belusi from a run back. Ball looks like it's on the 38-yard line. We can spot the yard lines a lot easier here, too. It was too. tough last week. We apologize to the folks at home, but it was real tough. So ball on the 38-yard line, well, maybe even the 39. Mahoney goes back, hands it off to Servini. Servini still has the ball. Servini breaks into the open. Servini may go all the way. That's 43, trying to get an angle on him. Servini goes in for the touchdown. A 
61 yard run, first play. Once he made that cut and got into the open, it was very difficult. A little bit of misdirection. The uh, blocking was to the right, and Cervini cut back to the left, and he goes 61 yards for the TD. And uh, with nine minutes and 50 seconds left in the first quarter, it's 6 nothing in favor of Pleasantville. going to kick and he was five for five last week that was john smith who uh, he outran john smith changed his number this year uh this uh week to number 43 a little motion on the play and that will set him back five yards looks like one of their uh interior linemen was offside no wonder i couldn't find who uh 43 was chasing him because I wasn't uh, we had the wrong switched pick. over to the uh, Pleasantville offense. He's just a defense. Yeah, Smith was a cornerback on the opposite side. He came all the way uh, across the field. The key element here, Jerry, is that they can't let this particular big play uh, break their momentum. They have to just rebound. Okay, so now the kick is from the 15-yard line. It's up, and it is... Good. And he is six for six in the season. So Belusi's kick is good. The holder was Greg Sharfstein. So we'll see how East Chester reacts to this one. It's a matter of, of character now, Jerry. What they have to do basically is just kind of put it behind them, understand what they did wrong, and basically just get on offense, get a couple of first downs, complete a couple of passes, get some momentum going. Because if they can move the ball against Pleasantville, at least that'll keep the ball out of their, their explosive offense. Or away from their explosive offense. Lucy's older brother also played for Coach Road at uh, Pleasantville. Unfortunately, I can't remember his. Uh, about, how first name. about how long ago? Uh, about six years ago. Oh. Lucy kicked off to Santiago and on a run, but it goes to the short man. Uh, taken by East Chester's number 28 on the play, and uh, that's Neo Takatsunamura, the, uh, the place kicker. Place kicker. Sunamura wasn't taking any chances. He covered it up. Well, this gives us a chance to go back and give you the Pleasantville, de Pleasantville defense. They line up with on the uh, front line with 56 Gorham, 58 Brennan, and 59, 59 Hong. They're in a 3-4. The linebackers are Bluzy, Roge, 35, Cooney, 44, and Hess, 55. Maldary over the ball. He's just a person. That handoff to, looks like to Spada. Spada off of the right guard. He picks up about three or four yards on the play. Yeah, let's call it uh, four. Mike Morgan on the uh, line across the way. We'll try to pick him up. He has the sign telling us it's second down. So he's Chester. We'll call that four, Augie, and uh, give him a uh, second and uh, six. East Chester operating out of an eye. Bad snap, and Maldari gets it and falls on it. That will go for a loss of about a yard, so East Chester has the ball now second down, third down and seven. This is what they have to avoid, Jerry. They have to avoid mistakes. Because this Pleasantville co uh, team is very well coached and very well disciplined. The backs for Pleasantville, Cervini and Malloy, the cornerbacks, Wright and Mahoney, the safeties. Anorata in motion. Maldari going back to pass. It's a little bit underthrown for Fiorello. Coverage on, by, on the play by Beluzzi, number 15. 
fourth down. Well, you heard it from uh, the PA announcer, Siri, fourth and eight for East Chester. And again, it would be it would behoove Mulderry to get the same type of hang time on, on this punt to uh, keep it away from both these explosive backs. High snap, but he has plenty of time. This goes a little bit deeper down to the 28-yard line where Cervini steps out of bound with it. And that was and Ernie Santiago, number 23, forced him out. Santiago, quite an impressive special teams player for the Eagles. He's always around the ball. Eagles band kicks up on Wisconsin. And Pleasantville will start with the ball on the 31-yard line. Eight minutes and five seconds left. And this is the second set of downs. Operate out of a split on the wing formation. Off the left guard goes Bluesy. Picks up about five yards. He was initially stopped at the line of scrimmage, but through second effort, picked up four yards. So good job by Chris Bluesy to get that four yards. He's uh, 5'10", 177. He's uh, not a bruising back. His brother, if I recall, was uh, quite, a, quite a bit larger. Cooney, the wing back. Hand off to Cervini uh, Beluzzi once again. Beluzzi uh, eats up a few more yards, and it will bring up about a third and three. Tackled by Sean Wiener, number 38, and... John Shalero, number 52. Pick up of a couple of more, and it'll be third down and three. Third down play. Cooney split out wide. I'm sorry, there's uh, somebody split out wide. Handoff up the middle. I was watching the end, and I fell for the fake. But it looks like it will be good for a first down. Tackled by number 44, Spade of the linebacker. But again, a good surge by the Pleasantville line. As you point out, Augie, it's the line that makes those plays. Absolutely. In that particular instance, they just pushed and were able to get the first down. And that's uh, Pleasantville's first first down, notwithstanding the touchdown. Cooney lines up in, on the wing on the left side this time. Belusi again, Belusi breaks through. Belusi being chased by Slovisha's players, including Fiorello and Wiener. Once he hits the hole, Jerry, he's real quick, and he's very elusive. I mean, he looked like he was going to be stopped for no gain, and he turned a no gain into about, uh, what, about a 20-yard gain. And a first down. So far, Pleasantville doing everything right. East Chester having trouble stopping them. This is a good test for East Chester, though, the defense to just basically uh, rise to the occasion. Hopefully Mahoney operating from the 37-yard line. Cooney in motion. Misdirection There's on that Mr. one. Cervini goes for a fairly uh, good game. About eight yards, maybe seven, eight yards. Good execution by the left side of the Pleasantville offensive line. Carry out that mixed misdirection. That's very important in order to carry that play out. And one thing we could expect Pleasantville to do, Dick Rote always does it, he'll line up his wing on different sides to test the strength of the East Chester of the opponent's defense. In motion is Cooney, handoff fake to Cervini, pass to, I mean, pass to Cervini. And he may be going in, and he is in for the touchdown. It was a good run, but Jerry, there were a couple of missed tackles on that. So a tough start for East Chester. Hopefully they can rebound. And with the kicker being six for six, I would assume they're going for one. Now Malusi's out there already. Holder is sharp steam. Up. 
something good. So Eastchester falls behind 14-0, and there's still five minutes and 29 seconds left to go in the first quarter as we watch the Eastchester Eagles coming off the field. Well, we would like to thank Joe Gambardella for the uh, donation of uh, tapes uh, for the uh, our football telecasts as well as the donation of our pink monitor. So we thank Joe over at uh, Greg TV in New Rochelle, as well as our good friend Vinny Petrini, who has donated our microphone, he of County Appliance in Stanford, as well as uh, tapes also, which he promised he'd have a new set for us, promised me yesterday. So, uh, and he's also one of our cameramen for basketball. Yeah. And will be for softball in the spring. <laughs> Chester in a deep hole against a good team. Let's see how they react. Ball floats over Santiago's head. Honorado takes it in the end zone. He's after the 5, 10. And it's called a touchback. That'll bring it out to the 20, first and 10 for his touchback. Hold for a touchback. Sorry, I can't help us uh, with the rule on that one. Why no, it's called a it uh, touchback, and perhaps uh, if it goes, we'll, we'll try to get a uh, interpretation on that at uh, halftime. The only thing I can think of is the rule is if the uh, ball goes into the end zone, it's a uh, touchback. Unless they're saying that it, it touched one of the East Chester players first and then continued back in there. Nonetheless, East out. Chester has the ball first and 20. Maldari over the ball. Here's a pitch out to Fiorello. Fiorello tries to find some room when he can't. He's taken down by Aaron Hess, the linebacker. Brought down by number 55, Aaron Hess. Pick up about two, Jerry, on that. Second down and eight. Now there he goes uh, to the sidelines, brings in the play. Bobby Lagana, the center. He starts to show his pass. Now there he runs out. Now there he running out. He's being chased. Oh, yes. Nice catch yeah. by Black Honorado. Great block by yeah, Giorgio yeah, yeah. on the play. Yes. And Paul Cooney was right on his tail. How he found Honorado, don't know. Good block for Gione. And Maldari had two tacklers right in his face. Very cool by Mr. Maldari. He found the open receiver. Good job by Honorado getting open. And good block by Fort Gione. Good execution by East Chester on that play. And with the first down, East Chester moves into Pleasantville territory. They'll be operating from the 49-yard line. East Chester first and 10. Honorada in motion. The backs are split. Hand off to Fiorello. Fiorello finds a little room. Fire. Fiorello finds some more room. But he's finally taken down by Chad Wright, the defensive back. Think of about eight yards in a play, Jerry. Good job by, by uh, the halfback on that. Fiorello. This will bring up a second, about a second and four. I'll tell you what, a couple of first downs, a score right here, and they're right back in this ball game. Momentum is key. And I said in the beginning, getting Honorado in the offense is going to be key today. I think it's very important. And Honorado comes over to the left. He goes in motion. Hand off to Spada. Spada finds a hole. Falls forward. Looks like first down. The only problem, Jerry, is you don't want to dig yourself too big a hole in the beginning of the game against a good team. But the momentum seems to be switching now, so hopefully it will continue. I just like to prove the experts wrong, that's all, Jerry. <laughs> Ball on the near side of the field, as you can see. 38-yard line, first and 10 for the Eagles. Honorada, split to the left. Sorry, Honorata in motion. 
Hand off to Spada. He gains about three. Good block by Reyna. Tight end Joey Reyna threw a nice block to uh, spring the back on that play. I wish they had done that during the World Cup. I mean, you had heard more whistles. You didn't know uh, whether the play was going on or not. Somehow the players knew because I guess they had a, uh, a more shrill whistle down on the field. But uh, it was terribly annoying if one was in the stands, which I had the distinct pleasure to be up in uh, That's what you want to talk about, yeah. So uh, Maradona's last game. Back to football now. Honorata goes in motion. Hand off to Fiorello. Fiorello goes right up the middle, doesn't get much, less than a yard. Tackle by 15, Beluzzi, he does everything. Quite an effort, huh? Quite an advance. Sally Guanti has been in the game at uh, split end on the near side. That's number 22. There, there's Sal, yeah. Seen with the blonde hair sticking out of the uh, helmet. Honorata in motion once again. Third down play. Valdari holds the ball, finds the hole on the open, on the option, and he'll be short of the first down by about a yard or two. So uh, we'll see what East Chester does. Nice job. Faked the pitch to Honorata and, and kept the ball and got a few extra yards. Good job. It is a first down. Whoa. How about that? East Chester got a good spot on the ball. They give credit to Maldari on that. Did a nice job. So the ball on the 27.5 uh, yard line. <laughs> Since the uh, PA announcer calls it the 28, we'll go with that. First and 10 for the Eagles. Eagles on a roll. They've uh, banged out a couple, three first downs already. Was that three first downs? That's right, very key. This, this series of downs will establish them for the game, Jerry. They've got to continue the momentum. Iguante split out to the right. He's just operating in an eye. Handoff fake. And the round by Honorato, who's taken down by Cervini. But Honorato did pick up about three or four yards on the play. So again, getting Michael Honorato into the offense. Yeah, last last week, Honorato went to motion on almost every play. play. It wasn't used at all. It was, was like it? A, it was a decoy, basically. I would think. And when you do that the whole game, then you kind of forget about him. But uh, as it turned out, he's just a didn't need anymore. They uh, won 14 to 6. He's an offensive weapon they're going to need today. They're going to need everything in their arsenal, basically, to uh, to overcome this tough Pleasantville defense. And right now, they're doing a good job. Iguante on the left side now. Hand off to Fiorello following Spada. A crunching tackle by Cervini. There's another young man. Very, very talented and very, very athletic. Good tackle. What a cornerback Cervini is. I think that East Chester is going to start having to go to the left side and uh, stay away from Cervini. It's third down and about uh, almost 10, Jerry, so we'll see what they pull out of their bag of tricks. Okay, they have uh, Iguanti uh, flanked to the left. Honorata once again in motion. Operating out of a pro set. Maldari keeps looking for the option. Pitches back to Honorata. Honorata makes a nice catch, but he's uh, pulled down uh, fairly quickly by number five, Chad Wright. Good block by Salanguanti, number 22, to allow Honorata to pick up a few extra yards. Okay, this brings up a fourth down situation, and the ball is on the 20, about the 20, 24 yard line. What do you do? Gotta go for it, Jerry. Too far for a field goal, doesn't pay to uh, punt. Gotta go for it. Gotta go for it. But the first quarter is over. So we've rung up one quarter with the Eagles trailing 14 to nothing for the Panthers of Pleasantville. Jerry Fishoff, Laurogi Lanzetta, Dave Gargani. We will be back for the start of the second quarter shortly.
Needless to say, a very crucial play for East Chester. The ball is on the Pleasantville 24-yard line. I know it's an early in the game, Jerry, but it does establish something if they can get a first down here. It shows that they're, they're resilient and they can rebound. That's very important. Fourth down and seven for East Chester. Now Darry rolls out. Almost trips. Finds what it a open. nice. Cuts through. Now Darry may go all the way. Now Darry into the end zone. What a job. He, took, he put a fake on Beluzzi like you wouldn't believe. Beluzzi went for it. He thought he was going to throw. He tucked the ball in and ran with it. And Beluzzi went for the fake. Good job by Jeff Maldari. Excellent. And what this does, Jerry, is establishes East Chester now. They're back in the game. And they're, and they're not, you know, you know, putting their head between their tails. They're going forward. That's a great job. East Chester sent only one receiver out. And that was uh, John Smith, number 43. He was covered. And... Uh, Somehow, uh, Maldari eluded the uh, defense. Uh, it, it, but I wish we had instant replay, Jerry, to see what Maldari did there, just get, putting the fake on Belusi. Maldari holding for Sunamura. And very quietly, Sunamura is three for three this season. Good job by the freshman, Sunamura. how to get back into the game. We have ourselves a ball game, Jerry. As East Chester Band kicks up the Notre, the Notre Dame fight song. Scores from other games today, uh, high school games, uh, Augie, you, you attended one this morning? Well, I don't know if I want to get into that, but Fordham Prep freshman tied Cardinal A's 6-6 six six, if anybody cares. <laughs> Let me go on to the schedule. Well, we didn't have the ticker going, so... Um, Little filler. On the schedule. Uh, next week, of course, big game for Tuckahoe. They're homecoming at Tuckahoe Field. Saturday, 1.30. Hopefully, we will be covering that. Uh, on 10.10 Monday, which is Columbus Day at 11 a.m., Sleepy Hollow. 10.15 Saturday, Pelham at 2 p.m. at Glover Field. It's usually a memorial field. This year will be at Glover. In the last two games of the season, 10.22 and 10.29, Bronxville and Byram Hills. So Both here. Correct. Both home games. Well, I'll talk about Memorial Field and uh, that area down there. The last time these two teams played uh, down there was that famous game about uh, five years ago. They uh, played in the bowl game, and East Chester won in overtime. Uh, Ralph Zingaro's kick. Ah, a little bit of nostalgia. Yeah, I hope they have a, a uh, trivia question today, Joe. I will. Okay. I have a trivia question. Well, Barry ready to kick off. Yep, Belusi is back along with uh, Cervini and Wright. Goes over to Cervini's side. This is, catches it over his head, back to the five-yard lines, up to the 10, 15. Good job that time by Solero, number 52. And number 23 again. Number 23, Ernie Santiago. Good point before, Jerry, about his special teams play. And now with uh, <coughs> Pleasantville pinned back pretty far, Let's see what East Chester can do if their defense can come up with it. Uh, East Chester uh, will be a uh, good position to keep this uh, keep this close and uh, try to tie it up. Reminiscent, of course, of Renee Thompson, the uh, player for the Giants a few years ago. And a handoff to Belusi up the middle. He was the second man through. He had Cervini in front of him. And he goes for about five yards. Yep, and 61 Solero on the tackle, but that's too much on first down, Jerry. They've got to keep it to two, three yards. Well, what's this Renee Thompson uh, stuff? He was, you're not a big Giant fan, are you? Not at all. <laughs> not only for 30 years, not at all, Jerry. Second down, sophomore quarterback Mahoney operating out of the eye. One man split. It's Malloy. Hand off to the second Good man. Good stop. Through. East Chester's line equal to the task. That's Raina, number 81, J Jerry, and Vaccaro, number 66, on the stop. That's what they have to do. They have to stop him cold. Sean Wiener also uh, coming into the play from the outside linebacker. As I mentioned earlier, he's uh, starting for Brookale, who in turn is starting for... Uh, Lucente, Lucente. Dennis Lucente. Yeah. He's just starting to establish themselves on defense after a shaky start. Stop him. Looks like Belusi. 
That was Vicaro again, number 66 on the tackle, Jerry. Good enough for the first down by about three yards. So uh, the ball comes out to right on the 30-yard line for Pleasantville. 10 minutes, 17 seconds left in the second half. Just joined us from their first play from scrimmage. Anthony uh, Servini, 61-yard run, put the Pleasantville Panthers on the uh, scoreboard for the first. They scored again, and it was 14 0 East Chester has battled back. 14 7 to score right now. Hand off to Servini. That time, nobody was fooled, Jerry. Bye. That's number 38, Jerry. Sean Wiener again. That's right. Good containment by Wiener. He wasn't fooled, and good tackle. Servini tried to give him the hip, and, didn't, and Wiener didn't take it. Good job. Servini making a statement and a bid to uh, stay in the starting lineup. Operating out of an eye formation. Mahoney goes back to pass. He has Servini on the short one. He's popped by Rupel from the other side. And that was number 43 also, which we don't have on our program. Yeah, Smith. Oh, I'm Smith sorry. Smith changed his number. Smith changed his number. Okay, it's John Smith. I'm well, sorry. you're uh, heading up from the Bronx. <laughs> he, he took off he his took 21 his and put on the 43. Actually, I believe he's waiting for a 21, his 21 uniform in blue. He already has it in white. Or is it something like that? Is it that. the cleanest? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to know where it Third is? Third down and five. Third and five. In motion is Cooney. Mahoney fakes. Mahoney looks. It's coming to this side. Servini's there. Short-handed Servini. He was uh, popped on the play by Honorata. Still, still held on for a nice gain, and they bring the ball into East Chester territory for first down. He's got good hands, Jerry. And he, and he really has a nose for the ball. He gets there. And uh, just an all-around good athlete. Boy, that, that was a heck of a play because Honorata was all over him. That's correct. East Chester trailing 14-7 to the Panthers of Ardsley. Up over the ball is number 56, Kevin Gorham, center. Man in motion. Hand off to Beluzzi. Beluzzi eludes the first tackler. Beluzzi breaks loose. Being chased by Smith. And he is in there for a touchdown. A 49-yard run. And Pleasantville, he is so back on top, top by two touchdowns. He is so tough to bring down, Jerry. I mean, he's just so elusive. I've seen quite a few high school games in the last couple of years, and I haven't seen a team with that explosive, two yeah. such explosive players in the same backfield. Yeah, Belu as I mentioned, Beluzzi is not big, and Beluzzi will now be trying for his tenth, uh, his ninth point of the game. Beluzzi attempting the extra point. Chad Wright doing the holding. It's up, and it's it up. is... And it is good. Not as pretty as last time, but nonetheless, one point. That makes the score Pleasantville 21. You're a soccer coach. Is, did he play soccer too, or? <laughs> Who's that? We'll lose it. I'm wondering. No, I think he's football all the way. Oh, okay. Losing family uh, into uh, football and wrestling up there at Pleasantville. Again, Jerry, it's early in the game. He just has to keep its head about it and not get down or discouraged. They did come back and answer the last touchdown with a touchdown. Let's see what they can do here with uh, 818 left in the. Uh, Second half. As we see Everett Vaccaro uh, quarter, I'm sorry. chatting with uh, Fred DiCarlo, one of the assistant coaches. There's a timeout on the field taken by Pleasantville. Pleasantville takes a timeout. Well, next week, East Chester and Tuckahoe. Tuckahoe has... Uh, Rashawn Williamson and John Bacoli. Bacoli, the uh, basketball player, uh, as a uh, running back. And of course, Frank Boone is and doing Frank, the quarterback. Frankie Boone running the ball quite a bit himself. Well, it seems like Tuckahoe has this prototypical quarterback, like, like for example, like Dante Johnson, the scrambling, running, option type quarterback, as opposed to the straight drop back passer. And uh, they've done pretty well in the last couple of years with that type of offense. But I don't think they have the same. 
Uh, the team has, has lost quite a few seniors, but they're still very good. And they should uh, present a very formidable opponent for Eastchester next week. All right, maybe we can get those uh, Eagles into uh, the game, help the defense a little bit. And uh, the game will be covered by our sister station, Channel 18, Tuckahoe Educational Access TV. Tom Kennedy and the crew uh, will be there assisting him. And as people have said, Jerry, I hope you're able to neutralize Chris Risso and Stan Moore. It would be impossible, and I'll hope that the Eastchester Eagles neutralize the Tuckahoe Tigers, and I'll just try to get a word in edgewise. And we're ready. Honorata back, along with Santiago. This comes to Honorata. He takes the ball on the 15-yard line. He's up to the 25, follows the wedge, and brings the ball out to the 30. He's uh, brought down on the play by number 12, Charles Reed. Assisted by 25, Greg Malloy. Maybe at later in the game, Jerry, you can just tell me how you're going to neutralize those guys. I'd be interested to see what your strategy is. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to neutralize them. I'll let the players do the uh, talking on the field. I'll be there to Neutra neutralize Stan Moore. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be. It's a job in itself. And Chris Risso together? Forget I'll be there, about I'll it. I'll be there to help you, Jerry. Don't worry about it. Maldari hand off to Fiorello. Has a blocker out in front of him. Fiorello following the blocker, and he gets about five yards. Almost five. And it was uh, Vaccaro out in front of him. Good blocking by Vaccaro, good running by Fiorello, but Cervini, number 20, was blocked, got up, and made the tackle. Good job by Cervini. Athleticism, Augie. It's true. And it has remained cool. The uh, expectation was that the temperature was going to climb through the 70s and touch about 80 degrees. It's still in the low 70s, and it's uh, heavily overcast. Almost looked like rain, although there's no real rain in the forecast. Honorata in motion. Honorata gets a block by Fiorello, cuts in, and Honorata brings the ball up to the 38-yard line. He says her will be short. Yeah, Jerry, adding on Arata to the offense has given them an, an, another dimension. They have two very good backs in, in Fiorello and Spada, but he just makes, he, he, he keeps the defense of Pleasantville honest. So they've got three options there as opposed to two. He's just an obvious passing zone. Splits look like in Guante. It was an obvious passing play, uh, as I called it. Showed you how much I know. Uh, Fiorello carried it and looks like he's short of the first down, so let's see what East Chester uh, does. That was spayed out in front blocking for him. It's going to be, well, they're going to measure it, it looks like. Or are they? No, they're not. Yes, oh, yes. yes, they are. You just made the official's time out. Time out, Paul. Jim, what do you think? You're going to measure. Well, we'll uh, look through the uh, glasses as you watch on your TV set. I as, prefer uh, not Dave Gargani focuses us in. I prefer not to be premature. It's short. Von Hag on the chain, and referee Erdman says short. He indicated short by 9.312 inches. Well, we'll see what the coaching staff calls on this one, Jerry. Well, Honorata split out to the right. Orgione split out to the left. Donna over the ball. With 6.24 left in the second quarter. Big play for East Chester, Jerry. Okay, let's see what Maldary does. Hands it up to Spada. It's close. East Chester signaling yes. And referee Maldary says we've got it, so we'll see. Hopefully he's right. Uh, so does referee Honorata. And so does referee Erdman. That's the only one that counts. <laughs> First right, down for the Eagles. They trail 21 to 7. A gutsy call by Coach Luciano, but you know, Jerry, he had to do it. He has to keep the momentum. If he can go into the uh, to the locker room at halftime on the upside by scoring another touchdown, they're certainly in this game. Go down to the center. Maldary, the quarterback, operating out of the I formation. Here's a fake. Goes back. He's hit. Recovers. Good try. Was caught out there by John Smith. Well, Maldary was hit, recovered, and basically got that pass off. I I'm really impressed with Maldary today, Jerry. He's he just has so much poise. 
he's gained a lot in the years experience that he's been the quarterback for this team. Was that number 35, Richard Broge, in his face? Yes, it was. That will bring up a second and 10 for the Eagles. The ball was underthrown and a valiant try by Yeah, he was, he was throwing him. He was throw, really being chased there, Joey. Well, there he is. Smith back in the uh, lineup. He split right. Maldari looks, looks, looks. Finds Anarada, the short man in the seam. He fumbles. Let's see. No, it's... It's, it's pleasant to ball, Jerry. I thought it may have been whistled down. But the play was still alive. Well, let's give Anarada credit. Yeah, Good job. He was wedged between two tacklers. And the ball was jarred loose. But again, they did move the ball upfield. And that's East Chester's first turnover of the season. That's right. I mean, one thing I wanted to mention was the fact that they played error-free football last week, and that was one of the reasons they were able to neutralize the 182-yard performance by Angelo Morano. Five minutes and 50 seconds left in the first half. Again, it's time to regroup, and again, this team has character, and I'm sure they will regroup. Maybe we should take this moment, Jerry, before time is out to possibly announce our cheerleaders. I have the list right here, Jerry. As we uh, focus in on uh, Dennis Lucente, he's out today with a uh, groin pull. We have Diane Passeri, Christy Royal, Lori Parada, Corey Stano, Betsy Howell, Laura Provenzal, Donna Dana Talata, Tara Franceschini, Harmony Krieger, Mandy Rocco, Nicole Riley, Annette DeMarco, and Melinda DeLeo. Those are the Eastchester Eagle cheerleaders. And of course, led by Patty Handel, their coach. Jerry with uh, Pleasantville on offense after that turnover. And they'll be starting from their own 43-yard line. East Chester cheerleaders calling for defense. East Chester would like to get the ball back again and uh, have a chance to put on another score, narrow they, the gap, and see what they can do in the second they half. They really need to establish their defense, Jerry. This is the time to do it, just before halftime. Mahoney? Backs are split. That time. Goes nowhere. That's Vicaro on the tackle. Joe Reyna was in on that one. Absolutely. And actually, there was a loss on that play, Jerry, of one yard. Good penetration by Reyna and Vicaro. He's Chester with a fine hometown crowd. Right down below us. We can't get the uh, angle. Plus we're uh, partially blocked from the stands from where we are. Second down play, Mahoney's back. Raina hits him. If they go as a fumble, it does go as a fumble, and it's recovered. Raina coming from the right side, unblocked. Cervini recovered that uh, fumble, and it's called a fumble. That's what you call establishing defense, Jerry. Yeah, Ra Raina did not go for the fake. He just kept coming and coming. And when the quarterback, Mahoney, put up his arm, Raina kept coming. That's the way to do it. And as you pointed out earlier, when Maldari scampered in, Maldari did get the benefit of the defense going for his fake by putting up his uh, arm. Third down play, third long. Handoff to Beluzzi. Beluzzi's tripped up. He uh, springs forward. I don't know who tripped him up, but again, Coming off a big play like Reyna, you don't want to allow that kind of a game, but it comes down now to what? Fourth down? It's a fourth down play okay, with let's about six. And it's probably uh, let's see what they're going to do. Well, East Chester thinks it's going to be that because Santiago and Honorata back. Sean Wiener's in. Smith is in. Whistles blow. Three minutes and 58 seconds. 
four-minute warning, is it? But they don't. Four minute warning. But uh, do they only give a four-minute warning before the uh, before the end of the game? I can never no, I think it's at the half. Oh, so it's a four-minute warning. We had it right. Yep. We had it right the first time. Back to receiver, each has number 20, Mark Alvarado, and number 23, Ernie Santiago. And with 358 left, and I, I think, what do they have, at least two timeouts, Jerry, or possibly, I don't know if they have the three left, but with two timeouts, they should be able to, to uh, all right, it's two timeouts. With good clock management, they may be able to put the ball in the end zone. Back to punt for Pleasantville, Chris Belushi. As you heard the PA announcer, Belusi back to punt it away. What doesn't he do, Jerry? Cleans the uniforms after the game? I don't know, but he's quite multifaceted. Belusi, Lucenti, John Lucenti in on it. Rushes the kick. Santiago lets it go, and the ball rolls down to the 13-yard line, where it is downed by Dan McSweeney, the, uh, normally the tight end. Vaccaro got in on that punt, but just was a little bit short as far as blocking it. Not great field position, but with two timeouts and maybe a couple completed passes. We'll see if they can get back on the board. And gentlemen, the correct score, 21 for Pleasantville, Winchester 7. Well, with three minutes and 46 seconds left, and East Chester pinned all the way down, East Chester needs to be careful in Pleasantville. It could almost be smelling an opportunity to bring it in once Absolutely. before. Maldari operating out of the eye. Fakes a handoff to the first man through, gives it to the second man through, the tailback and Fiorello, is Fiorello it? Fiorello brought down by... Who gets out to the 16-yard line, a gain of almost five yards. Again, nice ball handling by Maldari. His fakes are very good. His, his fake there allowed Fiorello to pick up five yards. I don't think Coach Luciano is going to be too daring here. I think he wants to protect the football in this particular instance. East Chester packed in tight handoff to Fiorello again. Fiorello gets it out to about... 18, 19-yard line of Pleasantville. He bounced off a couple, of, a couple of tacklers and picked up a few extra yards. A nice run by Fiorello when he had nothing. Well, East Chester letting the clock roll down. Two minutes and 30 seconds unofficially. are split. Honorata on the wing. Hand off this time. Misdirection. Fiorello gets out. Maybe good for the first down. Close to a first down, Jerry. With 204 left in the uh, second quarter. The down marker says fourth down, but no, now the, re the referee indicates first and ten for the Eagles. Well, the down marker person, Mike Morgan, was anticipating the worst. <laughs> But he was corrected, and now we have first and ten for the Eagles. First down for the Eagles. With the clock okay. stopped at 1.51. Well, let's see what happens now. Don't know why the clock is stopped. Honorata in motion. Maldari going back. Maldari trips a little. Finds Fiorello. Threw it behind him, Jerry. He was open. He was wide open and in the flat. But unfortunately, the pass was thrown behind him. Well, he had plenty of pressure on that one. Aaron Hess, the linebacker, was in on Absolutely. top of Maldari. Absolutely. So we have a second down situation, but at least the clock is stopped. And now why the clock was going, I don't know. Maybe to catch up for the fact it should have been going in the last play. No right, we'll have a little fun here. Before Gion uh, comes out of the uh, lineup for East Chester, John Smith in at the uh, split end on the near side. Honorata in the slot. Maldari. Maldari back to pass for the Eagles. Nice. Nicely finds Honorado who can't hold on. And Honorado knew he should have had it. 
I think at this point, what Anurata had in mind, he said maybe a short gain wasn't going to do much, and he saw a little bit of an opening, took his eye off the ball, and said, boy, if I can get through that opening, I can put seven points up there. Maybe that was the chance worth taking. Not trying to make excuses for him, but that would be my thinking, or at least uh, my reasoning for dropping a pass. Okay, it's now third. Third and ten. Larry Lagana, the center. He's Chester operating out of an eye. Honorata split all the way out on the left side. Smith coming down the right side. Smith, the intended receiver, well, a little bit underthrown. He's covered nicely on the play by Tom Mahoney, doing double duty. And the Eagles have to kick it away, and a minute and a half left. And I'm assuming Pleasantville has a couple of timeouts also. I don't know exactly, but with 135 and their explosive offense, you certainly want to keep the ball away from either one of these people. These people, meaning the two fellows who are back, Cervini, Cervini and Andalusi. And Andalusi correct. How do you do that? How do you do it? <laughs> you pray for a, a very odd bounce, and you cover it. The Warlocks will hide hang time. No, let's see what happens. Hang time. Hess was in there, and Cervini runs out of bounds with it, indicating that uh, Pleasantville see, wants to see if they could run it in once again. And guess who ran him out of bounds? Number 23, Ernie Santiago. Special teams player of the half. That's exactly it. Right. Very good. And you'll make sure to get him his plaque saying that, Augie. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know what? Those are the unsung players, Jerry. Those are the guys that, you know, really hardly anybody ever mentions them. They're in at the toughest time. It's called sometimes the suicide squad. And uh, they, they bear mentioning if they do something well. Well, especially Ernie. He's uh, perhaps the lightest player on the entire team. He goes 140, uh, save for the kicker, uh, Sunamura. Mahoney goes back. There was a, a whistle on the play by the referee, and that seemed to throw everybody off. I, I didn't understand that one. Let's see what happens. But it uh, goes in Eastchester's favor because of the illegal motion. Jerry, I am encouraged by one thing, even though the score is 21 to 7. Eastchester has been able to move the ball on Pleasantville at times. So if Eastchester defense can basically stop Pleasantville, which is not an easy task, I'm sure that they, the coach will tell them at halftime that they're, they're still in this game, which they are. Ever the optimist, Augie Lanzetta. Mahoney on a look-in pass, almost intercepted by Anthony Spada. I think Spada was the intended receiver on that, Jerry. This is right into his hands. Yeah, I'm not sure who was confused on that. They uh, operated with one back and two wings on that with one of them in the slot. That was a formation we hadn't seen. Uh, the ever ingenious Mr. Rowe. Ever ingenious. Yeah, I uh, remember the days he used to operate. He had this uh, tight end. They used to just pop the ball up to Mr. Otis Hill. There's a pass out into the... Uh, area where Malloy can't uh, flag it down. Ball was overthrown. If guess they, what? East Chester may get the ball back. I was just going to say that, Jerry, you're reading my mind. With the prospect of another pass and the clock stopping, they could get the ball back, and I still think they have two timeouts. And, of course, field position is going to determine, obviously, what they do with the ball. the uh, Pleasantville squad. Time is back in. Build around their sophomore quarterback. Tom Mahoney over center. There's that formation again. Nice tackle by Everett Vaccaro, number 66, bringing down 44. Paul Cooney, the halfback. Yeah, that was a double wing, uh, you might call that. Yep. Fourth down and ten. So Eastchester will be getting the ball back. Santiago will be going back. With and two seconds left. But, but Honorado not, so uh, Eastchester is going to try to block this kick. Or either that or they don't trust uh, Pleasantville to kick the ball, but I think Pleasantville has to kick the ball here. The clock is running. There's 39 seconds left, so I don't know how much time will be left. East Chester has what, one timeout left? Well, there's a penalty for delay of game. Okay, they, they did that on purpose. So he's up the clock. So the key
key issue here is hopefully to get a decent run back on this punt to get some field position. At least Coach Luciano with a couple of timeouts can try a few things if the field position is good. Getting a little chilly here. Uh, Chris Beluzzi back to kick. Back to East Chester can't get in there. The left-footed kicker kicks it off to Santiago. Santiago catches it on the run. He's up to the 30-yard line. He breaks through. He goes around a 35, 36-yard line where he's finally brought down on the play by, it looks like, Cooney. By the way, John Lucenti had good penetration on the punt and almost blocked it. They did put good pressure on the punter. So the East Chester Eagles have the ball with 21 seconds left. Ball is on the 36-yard line. You think uh, Maldari will uh, try to air it out? I don't know, Jerry. It, it, it's a question of what you want to establish going into the locker room. Um, I don't think a, maybe a safe pass, 10, 12 yards, might be. Honorata's flanked to the right side. So I, I would air it out. Play. To Honorata, this may be a trick play. He has a man in front of him. He has a blocker. He has Reina. Honorata going down the sideline. Honorata. Well time. Eastchester calls time out. Good block by number 81, Joey Reina to spring Mike Honorata. Okay, the clock shows five seconds. Now, Honorata could have run out of bounds, and East Chester would not have used their timeout, but Honorata said, hey, if he could break through just one more tackler, he may go all the way. And with five seconds left, you only have one play, when, so a smart play by Mike. When you're an aggressive athlete like that, you want, you want to keep the ball in bounds, and you want to run it. An excellent job by Michael Honorata. They expected an op halfback option pass on that one, and instead of the halfback option pass, he tucked the ball and ran with it. Good job by Michael Honorata. Good job by the East Chester coaching staff also. Good play calling. And again, it was very wise to get Michael Honorata involved in the offense, and that's what they're doing today. When we continue, the ball will be on the right inside the 25-yard line. The tail of the ball will be touching the 25-yard line. There you can see the ball in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. He's Chester huddled around there. It's going to be tough, though, Jerry, with, with the ball on the 20-yard uh, or just shy of the 20-yard line with only four seconds left. It's going to be really tough. Maybe a square-out pattern or something where you can get the ball out of bounds. I mean, obviously, you can't run it. It's going to yeah. take too much time. Yeah, you have one play. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess run it, but i got to get you into the end no, zone. No, you could, you could possibly do... I don't think you get two plays, Jerry. We'll see. That's going to be tough. You may have to go for the whole ball of wax. Well, Eastchester knows the play. Pleasantville doesn't. We do not. Bobby Lagana, the center. Snapping to Maldary. One man back. There's the play. Out to the right. And Maldary is sacked, and that will bring the first half to an end with the score. Pleasantville, 21, well, Eastchester, when seven. Four seconds left in the, in, the, in the half, Jerry, and three receivers on the right side. You know it's a pass, and I guess they just the defense just came. They just came with abandon. But again, to, I think what Eastchester has done, despite the fact going into the locker room down 21 to 7, they have established the fact that they can move the ball on Pleasantville. And if they can play some tight D in the second half, they could certainly come back and do some damage in this game. We will be back for the start of the second half here on Eastchester Government Access Television, Channel 14.
back on the air, ready to go for the second half. East Chester still in a hole, 21-7. Jerry Fishoff with Augie Lanzetta, who will be doing the third quarter, and Dave Gargani, who's directing the action today from our booth. Is this a booth, Augie, atop the uh, Jarvis Bowl? Semi-booth. <laughs> uh, why don't you give the, uh, we were discussing when the camera was uh, not rolling, Jerry, the fact that you got the ruling on that one play with when Michael Anarata uh, on the kickoff. Why don't you? Uh, yeah, I spoke to uh, head referee Erdman. It's very simple. That the ball cannot be run out of the end zone on a kickoff in high school. One exception, if the player on the receiving team catches the ball, and as he does so, his momentum takes him into the end zone, then he can run it out. Very the purpose good. of the rule, the referees weren't sure, but the, uh, the Federation likes to make rules. They thrive in having rules different between high school and college. And uh, we're ready for the second half. East Chester, 21-7. Here's uh, the scoring in the first half. A 61-yard uh, run from Servini. First play from scrimmage. Kick by Beluzzi and Pleasantville is on the board. 7-0 quite early. With about five and a half minutes left in the first quarter, Servini caught a pass from Mahoney, ran it in. It was a 28-yard pass run play. Beluzzi added the extra point. And Eastchester was down 14-0 at the end of the first quarter. East Chester scores a uh, touchdown. Nice play by Maldari, a fake. And he scampered in from almost 30 yards out. Sunamura added the extra point. Made it 14-7, only to have Beluzzi come back on a 49-yard run. And he added the extra point. So the scoring has come all on big plays, especially so for Pleasantville. 61-yard run, 28-yard pass, 49-yard run. And here to bring you the second half, as Maldari about to kick off, is Augie Lanzetta. Okay, thank you, Jerry. It's Maldari. Kicks the ball, low end over end, in the direction of Servini, number 20. Servini heads up the center of the field, and he's hit once, hit twice, and finally brought down by a, an excellent tackle by number 66, Everett Vaccaro. He broke a couple of tackles, but wasn't gonna get away from Vaccaro, so it's... First and 10 for Pleasantville on the 32-yard line. And the one tackle he broke was, uh, just to show you he's not perfect, was uh, Ernie Santiago uh, didn't get him. Okay. All right, Pleasantville, first and 10 at their 32-yard line. That's Mahoney Porter, sophomore quarterback, 6 feet, 165 pounds. Setbacks are Beluzzi. It's a handoff to Beluzzi, number 15, off the left side, but brought down by Vaccaro, number 66, after he picks up about two, three yards on the play, and will bring up second down and seven for Pleasantville. Balls at the 36-yard line. As you can hear our PA announcers, Ciceri. Uh, Servini going out. Yeah, he looks like he's uh, limping out, uh, Augie. And that was number 35. Looked like he was checking in. Uh, maybe Rose. a cramp. Maybe a cramp the way no, he uh, number five. Right, right, uh, Chad coming in. Chad Wright, 5'8", 164-pound sophomore. There's a lot of sophomores on this team, Jerry, so they're going to be uh, somebody to reckon with, to be reckoned with for the rest of uh, you know, the next two years, especially the next three years. That's number four, Sheriff Steen. Flanked on the right side. That's right. He bursts over the middle. Tackled by number 61 and number 44. That's Spade at number 44 and 61, it looked like. The left tackle, Joe Shalero. Shalero wearing a different number. He wore 69 last week. And he's just, he, I'm sorry, uh, Augie. No, go ahead, Joe. The Chester line uh, going across is uh, Joe Rain at the defensive end. Joe Shalero, uh, left tackle. John Shalero, right tackle. And uh, Justin Brucal, 47. He's on the other side at defensive end. And a timeout is called by, uh, by Pleasantville. Pleasantville. With the 10.47 left in the third quarter, the score 21-7 in favor of Pleasantville. 
Well, that gives me an opportunity to uh, mention the rest of the uh, lineup for East Chester on defense. Okay, the linebackers, Fiorella, 46, and Wiener, 38 on the outside. Spade of 44 and Vaccaro 66 on the inside. Smith and Honorata, numbers 43 and 20, respectively the cornerbacks, and Phil Skolaski, number 93, the safety. Pleasantville lines up on offense as follows. The tight end is McSweeney, 42. Sharfstein is the split end, he's number four. The tackles are Lyons, 79, and Brennan, 58. Aaron Hess, 55, at one guard. And the second guard is Steve Hung, number 59. And the center is number 56, Kevin Gorham. Gorham. Okay, back to the action. Third down and about five to go. That's a handoff to number 44, and that's Paul Cooney, who bursts over the middle for a big gain and a first down. That was spade on the tackle, but not before Cooney rumbles for about 15 yards. Well, it may be that East Chester was keen on the two uh, backs that uh, have been uh, rolling up all the yardage, namely uh, Servini and Beluzzi. Last week, Jerry, it was it was basically a Morano show. I mean, he was the back, and, and basically he carried most of the uh, the, for the yardage. But uh, they have quite a depth at the uh, bat, at the running back position. Mahoney, Mahoney, back to pass, back to pass. He was hit by Vaccaro, gets the ball to Beluzzi, and he bobbles it going down. Coverage by number 20, Michael Honorata, and number 27, Donnie Murphy. And that'll bring up a second and 10. The ball is at about the 47-yard line of Eastchester after that incomplete pass. And that's the first time we've called Donnie Murphy's name probably this season. He's now in at uh, defensive back. He's small, 5'6", 140, only a sophomore. Along with number 43, Smith, and number 20, Honorata. Okay, play resumes, first and 10, 47-yard line. It's Mahoney back to pass, and, and Reyna, Reyna. Well, no, according to the referee, it was a forward pass, and that will be, according to what the signal was an incomplete pass. Another great play by Joe Reyna. Somebody's missing the block on Joe. Absolutely. He's coming in uncontested, Jerry. And that's, I tell you what, a sophomore quarterback, that's got to keep him thinking because that's coming from the backside. You can't see it. All you know is you can hear those footsteps, Jerry. That'll bring up third down and 10. It's Cooney in motion. And it's a handoff to number 15. I'm sorry. Four, uh, my mistake. That's number 35, Richard Brogue, another one of the talented backs for Pleasantville. But again, a very short gain, and that's going to force Pleasantville to punt. And that's Beluzzi back in punt formation. Good defensive series by Eastchester. Again, establishing themselves and preventing Pleasantville from scoring. That's Beluzzi back. Rich Palmaro comes in on the uh, special team for East Chester. High ender and over in punt in Honorado's direction. Honorado picks it up, goes up the field, cuts into the center, but he's met by several Pleasantville players. And he will, East Chester will establish possession first and 10 on about the 26 yard line. After about a seven or eight yard return by Michael Honorado. He was taken down by Greg Sharfstein, number four. Maldary getting the play. And you see there, Brian Howell coming out. He's the ball boy. I need to mention him once each half, so I've discharged my duty. You just don't want his dad knocking on your door, that's all. <laughs> no, actually, he's a nice young man. Plays in the East Chester Little League and also for Blue Devils. It's first and ten for the Eagles. It's Maldary handing off to Fiorello. He's trying to cut wide, but met by number 20, Servini. A good read by number 20, Servini, who took that play to the outside and made the tackle. Yeah, both Servini and Beluzzi uh, were being blocked, but they held their ground, and Mahoney came up from the uh, safety to uh, pin East Chester's run. Yeah, he did not allow him to turn the corner, Jerry. That was a good play by uh, number 20. He'll bring up a second down after that loss of about three yards in second and 13. Balls at about the 24-yard uh, line. 
Jamal Derry, the quarterback, Fiorello and Spader. In the backfield, Rayner, the tight end. And that's number 35. Joe Forgione flanked on the left side. Jamal Derry barking out the signals. Quick handoff to Spader, burst over the middle. Brought down by number 15, Beluzzi. Spader gets back to about the original line of scrimmage where that'll be third and 10. And the ball is about the 26 yard line. Let's set the uh, Pleasantville defense. Okay, Jerry. They're in a 3 4. It's uh, Gorham 56, Brennan 58, and Han 59 across the front line. The uh, linebackers are Beluzzi 15, Broge 35, Cooney 44, and Hess 55. The backs are Savini and Malloy, and the safeties are Wright, number 5, Mahoney 16. Honorata in motion. Maldary back to pass, straight back. He's looking for Honorata, and Honorata, he overthrows Honorata. Now Mike made an, a valiant effort to try to turn around and pluck it out of the air. Absolutely, but the ball falls incomplete, and that'll bring up a fourth down in a punting situation. That'll be Jeff Maldary going back to punt for East Chester. Maldary had plenty of time on that. Yes, and, uh, good protection by the line. And 52, John Shalero came back and uh, did a real nice job blocking for him. It's Maldary punting. It's high, end over end. Beluzzi will corral it at about the 40-yard line. He trips. He avoids a tackle by number 23. And he is forced. I'm sorry, Jerry. No, I'm saying he... And he put the ball on the ground, and I was under the impression that that uh, would have counted as being down. Apparently not. Well, we need another old ruling, Jerry, but <laughs> it was T.J. Hamill. At the end of the next half before tomorrow's uh, tomorrow's game, next weekend's game. That's if I can get a word in edgewise with uh, Stan and Chris. Okay, as play resumes, it'll be first and ten for Pleasantville, just over the 50-yard line. It's just a defense remains relatively intact, but I see Ernie Santiago and Phil Skolaski now in for the Eagles with Smith on the other side. It's Mahoney bringing his yeah, as you team pointed out, Smith and Santiago, they're cornerbacks now. That's correct. It's Cooney in motion. Hand off to Beluzzi, but Shalero grabbed onto him and brings him down along with number 47, Justin Burkow. And that throws Beluzzi for a loss. We have an injured player on, on the uh, field. I can't see who that is. Yeah, it looks only uh, to be a cramp for one of the Eagles. Dr. Boyer out there immediately. That was a loss, Jerry, so now it'll, it'll be uh, second down. The ball's just over the 50-yard line. Yeah, it looks like a cramp. You're right, Jerry. They're kind of rubbing his left leg and stretching it out. While we have a moment, let's again review the rest of the schedule for the Eagles this year. They yeah. will be playing Tuckahoe next week in Tuckahoe's homecoming on 10-1 Saturday at 1.30. And again, as my broadcast par partner indicated, he will be with uh, bringing you the action on our sister station, Cable 18, with Stanley Moore and uh, Chris Riesel. Uh 10 10, Sleepy Hollow at 11 a.m., that's Columbus Day. That was 81, Joey Reyna. 10 15, Pelham, 2 p.m. at Glover Field. And the last two are home games, 10 22 and 10 29, Saturday at 1 30, Bronxville and Byram Hills. Homecoming is 10 22 against Bronxville. Bronxville and Tucko playing each other today. Okay, his play resumes. Hopefully that's only a cramp for Rainer. He'll be back to the action. To, uh, Mahoney over the ball. And a quick handoff to Beluzzi. Real shifty running by Beluzzi, but not too much yardage. Picks up about four yards on the play. Breaks over the original line of scrimmage, and it'll be third down and about nine to go. And that was uh, Spada and Honorata on the tackle. As you pointed out, Augie, he sure showed us a good indication of his quickness, darting back and forth, trying to find that hole, 
and using his hands to push off. Absolutely. Very difficult to bring down. That's Sharfstein flanked out on the left-hand side. It's a handoff to Beluzzi again. And tackle made by number 75, it looks like. Bobby Lagana, number 75, and 61, Shalero. That's, uh, which Shalero is that, Jerry? That's Joe Shalero. And that'll bring up fourth down and about four yards to go for Pleasantville. And back in punt formation is Beluzzi. And that'll bring Santiago and Honorata back. Kick off high, end over end, in the direction of Santiago, goes out of bounds at about the 20, it's hard to see, Jerry, Let's see where he marks it. A relatively poor kick, it went off the side of his foot. Eagles take over first and 10. But it is inside the 20. That's correct. Yeah. Six oh two left in the third quarter. It is twenty one to seven in favor of Pleasantville. A uh, rather lackluster third quarter. Uh, just a couple of punts and not really much action, but hopefully that'll change. Down in front of us, you can't see it now, but Joe Rain is still being administered to by Dr. Boyer. It's Maldari. It's Maldari rolling out. He sees Anarada. Anarada catches the ball. Tries to elude number twenty one. Andrew Malloy, and we have a flag on the play, and it looks like it is going to be against Eastchester. That is the preliminary right. indication, and I and don't know what it is. the other uh, preliminary indication is that Everett Vaccaro is disputing it. And that was very close to a first down, Jerry. That was a completion. Well, Barry did a nice job of rolling out, finding Honorada in the flat, and connecting with him. But unfortunately, there is a flag on the play, and it's going to be marked off against Eastchester. And they can ill afford this, Jerry. They are down by two touchdowns. With plenty of, I might say, plenty of time left. Did you happen to see the call, Jerry? Well, it looked like a late hit, some unnecessary roughness. Okay, if that being the case. Second down, and long, because that ball was close to a first down, Jerry. That's Mulderry trying to, trying to try to make it up. About 17 yards, Ogie. Okay, quick pitch to Fiorello. Cuts inside, cuts back outside, and brings the ball back about to the first down marker. And, and Mahoney and Servini, who again gets up limping, brings Fiorello down. And that'll bring up a third down in about 11. <coughs> and the ball is at the 19-yard line of Eastchester. Servini comes out. And number 42, Dan McSweeney, replaces Servini. Comes, comes off and is favoring his right leg. So again, it's uh, that cramp. Raynor looks like he's working out the cramp on this side of the field. That's uh, Maldary. Over center, Lagana. Maldari rolling out again to the left side. He's, he's running into trouble. Hit initially by number 55, and that's Aaron Hess, the linebacker. And number 42, Dan McSweeney. So, on the rollout, good coverage by the Panthers secondary, and Maldari could not, and good pursuit by the line, and they could not get a pass off. And that'll bring up a fourth down and about 17 to go. 15 yard line. This is a very important punch, Jerry. Yeah, regardless, unless there's a uh, mishap by Pleasantville, the Panthers will have very good field position. It's Maldary back. Low snap. Gets it off. End over end. It takes an Eastchester bounce, and they've got to let it bounce. That's the mishap. There you well, That's a good prediction on your part. And the ball. Drops dead on about the 37-yard line. An excellent roll for Eastchester, and that's a break. Well, you're giving me a little more credit. I didn't consider that what happened as a quote-unquote mishap, but uh, an advantage uh, we'll right take for it. the Eagles. And 
and at, as play resumes. At the cornerbacks are Ernie, Ernie, Ernie Santiago and John Smith. And safety, Phil Skolaski. Mahoney over the ball. A quick handoff to, it looks like, number 35. That is Richard Brogue, tackled by 61. That is Joe Chalero. And Joe Chalero stops Brogue for a very short gain. It's about second and about nine. Ball at about the 38 or 39 yard line of the Panthers. Broge only is uh, 176, and uh, Solero outweighs him by Malloy in motion. Malloy's back to pass, and he was covered pretty well by Smith, but I got to tell you, that, that pass connected an excellent pass by Malloy. Uh, Mahoney, I'm sorry. Well, I think the big difference there was McSweeney used his height advantage. He goes 6'2", and uh, Smith we have listed as 5'9". So on the mismatch, the completion from Mahoney. Not quite the mismatch they uh, used to have uh, with uh, Otis Hill, with uh, Hill being 6'8". They used to just float it up there, and uh, just who was in the area just was good. Just jump for it, Otis. Play resumes, first and 10 after that completion. Malloy in motion. Handoff, quick handoff to number 35. Close, loose ball, but on and we'll see who has it. East Chester, East Chester. East Chester. They wanted it more, Augie. They wanted the ball worse because the Pleasantville player uh, was there. And I think that was uh, number four, Sharfstein. Was that 43 who got it, Smith? I don't know. But East Chester wanted that ball more. So East Chester down by two touchdowns with three minutes and two seconds left in the third quarter, unofficially, of course, has the ball back. It's deep in their own territory, about their 14-yard uh, line. But the important thing is they now have possession of the ball in the hopes of moving in for another touchdown before the fourth quarter begins. But in the meantime, we have 3.02 left in the third quarter. The score 21-7 in favor of Pleasantville. There seems to be some type of stoppage of play right now. Well, and East he, Chester hasn't quit. What Joe Luciano told him at halftime was, if you don't think you're going to win, why don't you go home now? All the players are out there, and they're trying hard. Absolutely. I would say it's a TV timeout, Jerry, but we don't get any timeouts because we have no sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> it's not because we couldn't get them, Jerry, but we know we're not allowed to have sponsors. That's what it is. All right, it's uh, Public Television, East Chester, Government Access TV, Channel 14, bringing you all the action. And uh, we, I understand we may be switching soon to a new channel, uh, East Chester Educational Access Television will be uh, Which is what we've been hoping for. action soon. Small dairy as play resumes, first and 10, 14-yard line. Uh-oh. almost as if that, that the lineman couldn't hear the count. I don't know if that's the case or not, but whatever, it's a five-yard penalty, and that puts East Chester back beyond, the, well, actually, back of the 10-yard line at the 9-yard line, and it will be first and 15 for the Eagles. They need a big play right now. Reina is back in at tight end, so it's good to see him back. He's had a really good game on both sides of the ball. And Cervini, who had a cramp for Pleasantville, is in on uh, the cornerback back in the game. I kind of knew, Jerry, that both those guys would be back into the game sooner or later. Okay. Play resumes. First and 15 for the Eagles. Small Derry barking at the Seagulls on Arata in motion. It's a handoff to the second back, Fiorello. Fiorello does a nice job of getting back and over the original uh, line of scrimmage. And, and about another four after that. So absolutely. Would we'll, we'll that be about nine, I guess. Good run by Fiorello. Down. That was a nice job by Joey Fiorello. I'm sorry, it's a uh, it was Cervini again. Cervini's had Cervini it Cervini again. It's uh, Pleasantville. Well, he's not. I, I want to see his stats, Jerry. He goes 5'6", 162. 
He plays bigger, doesn't he? Oh, absolutely. And, and I'm going to doubt very seriously that he's 162. The doctor checking out his left leg. Hopefully, it's not serious. In the meantime, Eagles take a moment. Action. Uh, do you see Jerry? Well, uh, see, Dr. Boyer is uh, in the area of the knee. And that's, uh, so it's definitely not the cramp no. that was bothering him before, which I think was in his right leg anyhow. This is his uh, left leg. Yeah, I think you're right. But that's Coach Cesare out there also. Taking a look. Actually, well, uh, Augie, I'm, sorry, you, I'm sorry, you mentioned that uh, Pleasantville was uh, nominated or anointed to be the uh, number one uh, team in uh, Conference 3. Correct. Who else is in there? Who else are they looking at? Oh, here it is. I'm sorry, Jeremy. We have Pleasantville, Rye, Pelham, Tuckahoe, and Westlake are all in the conference, in conference 3. Before Pleasantville has been picked to be the, as you would say, the class team of that particular conference. And coming off a rather easy win well, uh, uh, from Eldridge, 37 to nothing last week. And it looked like in the beginning of the game, Jerry, that, that uh, they were off to the races again, scoring very uh, two quick touchdowns before East Chester was even able to establish anything. But the Eagles came back, scored a touchdown, and answered them. Um, they have since scored another, but. Basically, they, it's, it's become more of a defensive battle now. Well, it's a shame to see a uh, player being carried off the field as uh, Cervini was, especially one who has played such a tremendous game so far. Uh, on the two touchdowns alone, he racked up 89 yards. He is he is what you would, would uh, say is an impact player, Jerry. Every time he touches the ball, something possibly could happen. So. We hope to see him back. We hope that the knee is okay. But in the meantime, they have quite a bit of depth at that particular position. And on defense, number 24, Chris Meehan is in. Okay, second down. Aldari to Anarada again. Anarada is flanked out to the right side, and Anarada again pushes real hard and gets very close to the first down. That's a play they had tried earlier and uh, went to the big gainer right before the end of the first half. The only difference and on Arata, is that it was on the other side of the field. And unfortunately, Honorata is coming up, and he is grabbing his right leg. And it's not a particularly warm day, Jerry, but it seems yeah, like yeah, that some, may of be a cramp. some of the players are cramping up. As I say, you need to drink those uh, fluids. This is something you don't like to see, uh, not over here, but uh, right behind him, the ambulance is going to be passing by, and uh, for Cervini, well, maybe it's just backing up, they're opening the fence or doing well, something. actually, it looks like they're going there. the other way, yeah. and they're going That's out. interesting. But did they have anybody in there, Drew? trying to follow the edge. It's an ambulance chaser. We're trying to spot it as it uh, goes out. There's the ambulance, and it's leaving. Uh, Cervini's not in the ambulance. No, he's, he's on the sidelines, isn't he? And Honorata's still yeah. down on the field, so... Uh, and they're massaging so be it. We need to... Uh, a, little, a little time. How about your trivia question? Oh, who holds the record, NFL record, still with the NFL, for the longest consecutive game streak? How about a hint? He's what? not a giant. <laughs> well, then I wouldn't know it. How, uh, w what, uh, could you give us maybe one or two hints, Jerry? To a maybe? hint? Yeah. Uh, before doing that, he was uh, famous uh, for something uh, real negative. Like running the ball into the uh, 
End zone. Oh, okay. I know, I know what it is. You know who it Carl is? Carl Eller. No, it wasn't Carl Eller. Oh. It was a, a teammate of Carl Eller. Oh. And now you don't have any more guesses because we don't want to ruin it for the oh. fans out there. Okay. We're going to write in, but I think uh, you said you'd buy him a dinner for the right answer. Is that what you're saying? Well, back to the action and the handoff to Spada. And it looks like he has got the first down. And that'll keep the momentum and the uh, drive going. And it, it'll be first and ten for the Eagles at uh, their own 25-yard line. How about breakfast at the Eastchester Diner with Augie? <laughs> that's pretty expensive now. And somebody said that's the booby prize. <laughs> no, actually not. All right. It's a good place. I wasn't the place was the uh, oh with me I, yeah. well see I had to you know deflect that Jerry you know. see I formation Maldary back to pass Maldary airs it out it's number 43 it's intended for Smith number 43 coverage by number it looks like is that number 16 yeah, that's, Malloy. that's Malloy the quarterback on the coverage and Maldary aired that out but unfortunately it goes incomplete and it's second down and ten. Pleasantville was prepared for that. They uh, spotted pass, and Mahoney went back, 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 and uh, just uh, played more of a prevent. And then when the ball was slightly overthrown, he actually had a chance to get it. Hopefully. And then what happened, it got reversed, because then Smith broke up the play. It's 122 left in the third quarter. Scored 21-7 in favor of Pleasantville. Eagles have the ball. Second down. Hand off to Fiorello. Fiorello bursts over the line of scrimmage and picks up about two. That's 35 broke on the tackle. And Fiorello picked up about three. Just shy of the 30-yard line, and it'll be third down. Big, big down for the Eagles because they're into the waning moments of the third quarter. We're under a minute. And they're down by two touchdowns. Honorata comes into the game, uh, replacing Santiago, who is in there on offense now. It's uh, Spade and Fiorello in the backfield. That's a fake handoff to Maldari. He's back to pass. He airs it out, and it's out of bounds. Complete to uh, the the uh, coach, Freddie DiCarlo, but unfortunately he's not in the game, so and we have a flag on a play. Right, Freddie hasn't played three sets in a long time. But when he did, he was quite an excellent football player. It's holding on the Eagles. Now we'll push the Eagles back. Well, if they accept, they may decline. Yeah, that's correct. Because it would bring up a fourth down. I don't recall the number of decline. the number of penalties last week, Jerry. But there seems to be a few more um, this week than there were last week. Well, that's Meldari back in punch formation. And Sam McVeigh comes in for uh, Pleasantville. We haven't called his number today. And that's like Chad Wright and number 24, Chris Meehan. Meldari, good high end over end. And, and he weaves his way through uh, several Eastchester tacklers. I thought he would stop. In fact, number 23, Ernie Santiago had a beat on him. And, and uh, so did John Wiener. But unfortunately, number 24 weaved his way through several East Chester tacklers and got an excellent run back and got the ball into East Chester territory on their 40-yard line, first and 10, with 24 seconds left in the third quarter. T.J. Hamill into the game for the Eagles. First time we're calling his number. He's on the line. Checks in for 61, Shalero. And off to the second back, number 35. And they were that looking for his Rogue. Spot. Rogue picks up about five yards. Brings the ball to the 35-yard line of East Chester. Second down. That was a tackle by number 35. Sorry. Hamill is number 65. Two seconds. One second. And it looks like that clock is very close to official, because that is the end of the third quarter. With the score, the Pleasantville Panthers 21, and the East Chester Eagles 7. Well, as you said, Augie, a little bit of a sleeping uh, time to catch a little nap. 
a little uh, boring, dragged a little, especially with the injuries, a few penalties, and no scoring. We'll be back with the start of the fourth quarter on East Chester Government Access Television very shortly. Cooney uh, carried and uh, Vaccaro stopped him. Third and five situation coming up. Pleasantville on the East Chester 35 yard line. East Chester really has to stop now and turn things around. Kevin Gorham over the ball. He's the center. Mahoney barking signals. Backs are split. Crashing through number 35, Richard Broge, who's in the game now. Good tackle by Anthony Spade at 44. Wrapped him up and brought him down. That's a new entry. Scott Vigilotti and also on the tackle. Like to get as many people mentioned as possible. Sure, and both coaches uh, starting to use uh, more players, and that's good. It's like to see them get a chance, even get their name mentioned here. Absolutely. Down marker is first down situation. Hand off once again to Broge. He goes for five, eight yards. Broge running really strong. Six footer, 176. He's a junior. He was brought down by number 23, Ernie Santiago. But again, the, the depth of the Pleasantville Panthers at the running back position is really exceptional. I mean, they put one in and take one out, and they don't seem to miss too much of a beat. You need to really credit that uh, Pleasantville Panther offensive line. Uh, Lions, Hess, Gorham, uh, Hong, and uh, Brennan opening those holes. In motion, Malloy, handoff once again to Broge. Broge avoids, eludes uh, two, three tackles, and finally is taken down by, what are taking that? Who's that, 83 on East Chester? What's that number? It might be 93, Phil Skolaski. 93, Skolaski. Skolaski will make a tackle on that. And just barely. Roge rolling up some yardage. He gets very low with the ball. He's very difficult to bring down. What is he? Uh, what number is he, Jack? Roge. 35. 35. Okay, he's 6'176. But he's built very stocky. Very big. Man split out all the way. First and goal to go for the 10. Roge again. Roge, Roge takes it down to the, about the two yard line. So, uh, the slicing type runner as well as uh, keeping uh, low. Tackled by 52, uh, that's, that's John Shalero and number 93 again, Phil Skolaski. That's number 38. Yeah, Sean Wiener in. and uh, Santiago comes out, uh, Smith comes out, goal line defense. Hand off once again to Broge, and he pulls it, puts it right in there. Valiant try by number 44, Anthony Spada, but Broge, big, strong runner. And only fitting for Pleasantville for Broge to take it in. A two-yard plunge. He got most of the uh, distance for them on that uh, drive. His second effort, Jerry, was, was uncanny on a couple of those carries. He just would not be brought down. And that sets up uh, number... No, it's not Belusi. No, he's, and he's got, what, nine in a row? Chris Meehan. Okay. Pass the wealth around. Two place kickers. Sharp seen holding. Locked. Locked. Everett Picaro, number 66. Before the score is 27 for the Pleasantville Panthers, 7 for the East Chester Eagles. With 9 minutes and 25 seconds left, the Eagles find themselves down by a bundle. Like 20 points, That's and uh, they need uh, somewhat of a miracle. Pleasantville just has too many guns. Too many offensive weapons and a great playbook that they know how to execute to a team. 
but the depth, Jerry, is, is I think one of the keys. I mean, when you have that kind of depth at a, at a, at a, a skill position, I mean, you can move your backs in and out. And pretty much, I mean, obviously, Beluzzi and Cervini are the key people. But the, I mean, they don't. The other ones are not necessarily that much underneath in terms of their quality and their and their talent. So, they got a lot of ammo. Man, kicking off. Santiago and Honorado way back for East Chester. Man's kick up the middle, end over end. It will be returned. Santiago on the 15-yard line, up to the 20-25. Ball is. Uh, from loose, and let's see who, re who recovered. Looks like he's just he yes. recovered. Great play by Chad Wright. That was 20 on Arado who came up with the ball. And just barely, uh, I think Wright was gathering it in when Anarada pounced on it. That blocking wedge formed in front of Santiago, but it didn't phase the tackler. 9-18 left in the football game. East Chester has the ball on their own 27-yard line. Jerry Fishoff, Ogie Lanzetta, bringing you all the action. Dave Gargani on camera and doing the directing today. Now Larry calling signals. Backs in a pro set. On around in the wing. Back in the wing. They run it up the middle where Spada gets about three plus yards. Tackle on that is Roge, number 35, and number 44, Paul Cooney. Reyna having uh, difficulty again. Cramping up, cramping up once more. And uh, John Smith comes right in for him. He's trying to stay in. I also... And uh, interestingly enough, when Smith came, came in, he came in for Ford Gio. I thought he was going to come in for Reyna. Reyna should be coming out, and he does, as Palmero comes in. Yeah, Rich, Rich Palmero. Yeah, Rich, 5'11", uh, 180-pound junior, number 88. And Joe plays with all his heart and soul on every play, doesn't he, Joe Reyna? Absolutely. He's, he's had a fine game. Operating out of the eye. Now there he goes back, looking for Honorata. Rolling, rolling, now he'll take it himself. He cuts back. Just barely over the line of scrimmage, so it'll be third down and uh, about six. Well, Derry made a little something yeah, maybe out, of, third out of nothing, five. so it's about third and five. Third and five. What they needed was uh, a, another five yards added to that little something to get the first down. Absolutely. And they need to be moving the ball up the field. Uh, the clock is their enemy. With 7.54 left in the fourth quarter and then trailing uh, 26 to 7. Smith split out to the left, Honorata out to the right. Maldary calling signals, operating out of an eye formation. Takes the handoff, being chased by Malloy. Malloy in the grasp, and Maldary threw the ball down. Heads up play by Maldary. And the referee indicates that it's a, uh, an incompletion. But on that particular play, number 44, Paul Cooney, I'm sorry, actually Cooney. for the second play in a row, came in unmolested. I, I believe I called him Malloy. I'm in Cooney. He came in unmolested and forced Maldary to throw that ball incomplete. But again, that was a headsy play. It saves the sack, and it saves also the uh, possibility of a fumble. snap, gets it off, Chris Meehan with the ball, Meehan hit right before the 50-yard line, and a great tackle by uh, T.J. Hamill, and when, you, and when you're hit by Hamill, Hamill, on our uh, lineup here, 5'4", 200 pounds, Uh, accurate that stat is, but I know he's a, he's a big young man. 
That was uh, on that play number 35, Aaron Hess made an excellent block. Excellent block on that play. Well, Pleasantville has it uh, once again. Cooney in the slot. Mahoney operating out of the eye. Meehan. Meehan goes down to the 40-yard line. Oh, we just had a, an interesting oh, bit of information. How about that? They threw us a curve, Jerry. It was Beluzzi wearing Meehan's uniform. Why is that? Don't know. We'll figure it out. Tom Mahoney's still in the game quarterbacking. We'll see if they uh, use uh, Austin Keene, their uh, second string quarterback. Keene was taking a bunch of snaps in practice. And with a big lead, I uh, might look to see him in. Cooney in the slot, hands off to the first man through. Number 35. Brogue. Brogue uh, has, uh, has pretty good stats. Should be up over 30 yards. We guess. I would say. And now the offense has been evenly distributed among several of the running backs. Right. Which uh, reminds us, Augie, uh, we're looking for a statistician. So uh, students out there, East Chester High School students, wanting to come up uh, and help us with the stats for each of our games, you're welcome. Just let us know. Mahoney, hands off. This is Rogue again. Rogue tearing up the real estate. He gets inside the 25-yard line. And he's taken down by Santiago. And with help from number 93, Greg Scholaski. Uh, I'm Bill sorry. Bill Scholaski. Bill Sorry, Phil. Uh, Phil sorry, Greg. Uh, uh, uh -huh. Greg is, in fact, Greg helped us. did a very nice job last week doing the uh, third quarter with me. All right. Then, uh, we, then we sent him up to Schenectady. He's up at Union now, hoping to play baseball. They're not on strike, are they? Here's no, Mahoney. I don't think so. uh, uh, legal motion. Legal motion. One of their uh, few penalties. Well, one thing we know, that was a good tackle by Skolaski, but we know that our, your safety shouldn't be making your tackles on your running backs. It means a lot of other people missed on, on, the, on the way. And 5.58 left in the fourth quarter, and 26-7 in favor of Pleasantville. I'd like to take this moment to thank uh, Town Hall and the supervisor, Jim Cavanaugh, and Joyce Honorata for getting our games on uh, in an expeditious manner. And also the fact that you know, we're sort of allowed to broadcast on this station, Cable 14, which is government access. Uh, and that it's really our pleasure to work with the people over at Town Hall who uh, have been very cooperative with us in trying to get these games on quickly. Including Joyce Honorata bringing the camera uh, this, uh, this weekend saving us a trip over there. Mahoney hands off to Broge. Broge goes for about three more yards. That'll be close to the first down. He was slowed by Vaccaro, number 66, and then finally brought down by Santiago uh, and uh, Espada, number 44. And the clock is certainly the enemy left in the fourth quarter. Has his field position in the Pleasantville Panthers. Cooney in motion. Hands off to the second man through. And Beluzzi gets uh, first down and then some. And the ball is down at the 15-yard line. Brucal on the tackle, but not before a big gain by the, uh, by the Panthers. Picked up about eight yards on that play. They're just so quick hitting the hole, Jerry. I mean, it's once they hit it, and, and obviously the misdirection is is working very well today. Not that time. The Caro number 66 says, "Uh uh," along with Honorata number 20. Yeah, it's interesting if you take a look at the uh, Pleasantville line. As the, as the running play forms, you may see the line blocking in one direction, 
the uh, first man through on a fake going in that direction, and the second man through going in the opposite direction. And Eastchester uh, needs to, the cause is Eastchester to need to figure out what's happening very fast and to react fast. There's a four minute warning with the score Pleasantville 27, Eastchester 7. Problem, Jerry. We have to bring a fly swatter to the next game. Yeah, these yellow jackets seem to uh, find their way up here, swarm around a little bit. Must be your aftershave, Jerry. What do you have on? Don't think so. <laughs> inside the red zone. Doesn't look red, but that's what they call it. All inside the 15 yard line. First down for Pleasant Field. Mahoney still calling signal. Hands off to Broge. Roach, uh, when he smells that end zone, he's really hard to bring down. And he brings the ball down to its uh, spotted outside the five-yard line. It'll be second down and about a yard to go. Tackle on a play was made by number 44, Spada. And number 46, Fiorello. But again, we're knocking on the door. Hand off. Again to Broge. And this time I think East Chester had a feeling they were calling Broge's number. It was TJ Hamill, looks like number 65. Clawed the middle very nicely and stopped Broge for no game. in motion, hand off to Broach. Looks like he has the first down. Looks like number 64 on the tackle. Goal to go, two minutes, 45 seconds left in the game. Pleasantville already up by 20 points. Chad Wright split all the way out to the right. Hand off to Broge. And Broge gets in. That's his second touchdown. Tapping off a grinded out drive. So the last two drives for Pleasantville were grinding it out. The first three were big plays. Absolutely. I have to admit, Jerry, that uh, this is a very well coached, very well disciplined team. You're impressed. Absolutely. I sure am. You'd vote for them to keep their number one rating. At this stage of the game, I would have to. I think at this point they've earned, and they've earned it and haven't listened to the plus, uh, the uh, or read the uh, press clippings. And as I said before in, in the telecast, they uh, have a, quite a few sophomores, so they've got a little bit of a legacy here. So that was Bel Belizzi who missed the last point, the point after before this. Yep. So his streak was ended. Okay. Because he is now number 24. As we come up field, the score is now 34 to 7. And uh, it's interesting. Do they think that this uh, game is... Uh, Important enough to have the blimp overhead. Let's see if we can get the blimp. Can we get that? Uh, maybe pan out a little. And, uh, let's see. There it is. There it is. The Goodyear blimp, high overhead, taking the special photos of the field for us. For us. Is it Goodyear? No, it meant life. I heard a rumor, Jerry. That's blimp. Coach Nicoletti up there taking. Oh, pictures. it's is Ralph Nicoletti. Uh, is that Nick Nicoletti spying on us? I guess so. There it goes. Dave Gargani getting the pictures today. And as we pan back on the field. Mahoney kicking off this time. Final two plus minutes. Honorata. 
with the ball. Goes 5, 10, 15, 20. Breaks into the open. There's one man to beat. Tries to jump over Chad Wright. Nice play by Mike Honorato. And uh, he came down on his leg. And Mike is down. He's in uh, quite a bit of pain. It looked like number five, Chad Wright, dove at him in his, his helmet his knee on that tackle. An exciting run by Honorata. Wright saved it from being a touchdown. Is that Dr. Boyer out there? Dr. Boyer is there. How long has he been doing? Uh, a few years. A few years. Very well known throughout the community of East Chester. You might just be able to hear a voice yelling out, and that's Coach Dick Rote, still barking signals from the uh, other side of the field, even though uh, his team has this game easily salted away. Coach Phil Bichetti, uh, very concerned about Michael. And uh, his coach Luciano putting away his papers. He's concerned about Michael, too. Despite the fact of the score, uh, there were a couple of instances today where the yeah. East Chester offense was very prolific and very good, and Michael Honorado was a key part of that offense today. And there we see the other injured player as uh, Mike gets up, Dennis Lucenti. putting no pressure on that, that leg, so. Well, we hope it's uh, something uh, not serious. But as play resumes, number 10, Vinny Pinto is flanked out to the, the left side. That's another number. Hands off. Play doesn't go for much. Go for Joe Ford Gione on the carry. We're under two minutes. Now it's the time, uh, Jerry, to mention some of the players that have been in today. But are now in uh, 82, Anthony Cedrone is in for the uh, Eagles. As we catch the numbers, we'll give them to you. And Cedrone is uh, flanked out to the left. Maldari hands off Hand up to, number to number 38. Sean Wiener, Sean Wiener who's uh, making his first appearance on offense, played a nice job on defense, starter today. And he makes the first down as Iarizzo. New number. And in comes for, uh, Sunamura, number 28. Sunamura is in the game. He was on the uh, special teams, and of course, he's the kicker. And uh, let's see where he lines up. 28. He's lining up in the spot that Cedrone lined up in the last play. Split in. Hands off to the first man through as Justin Brucal, a long gainer. Nice run by Justin Brucal. And uh, Joe Shalero. Was doing the blocking in front of him. Nice job by Joe. And Pinto back in the game. Vinny Pinto. He's a sophomore. 5'1", 145. And coming out is the aforementioned Neotaka Sunomura. He's Chester in a pro set. Hand off to the first man through. Brucal. Brucal spinning. Picks up a few on second effort. Nietzschester all of a sudden has the ball down at the 20-yard line as Coach Rote makes wholesale, wholesale substitutions, including uh, John Thies in there for the first time, Chris Keene, amongst others. Uh, 31 seconds left. Be nice to see Eastchester get a touchdown. That's Charlie Cooperman, uh, number seven, who checks in. And Cooperman, we didn't did not think Charlie was going to play. He's coming off a separated shoulder. Doctor just gave him permission on Friday. So Cooperman barking signals out of the eye. Cooperman hands off. To, I'm not sure who that was. 
may have been uh, Wiener. It was Wiener, and that should just about do it, except for East Chester calling a timeout. Scoring today, Cervini, 61-yard run. Cervini caught a pass from Mahoney, went 28 yards. Beluzzi, 48, 49-yard run. Roge, two plunges. For East Chester, Maldari on a beautiful play, 30 yards on a fake. And ran it in himself, Sunamura with a kick. And that brings us to where the scoring is, 34-7. Well, I see Michael Honorado sitting on the bench, uh, kind of rubbing his leg and his knee. Hopefully he's not being attended to now. So maybe that means and that's a very good sign, and we will see Mike uh, he's right getting up. there. He's, he's getting right up. There, getting up. Oh, he's ready. Let's hope it's just a temporary setback, and yeah. he'll be ready to go next week against Tucker. Well, he's uh, talking with uh, Dr. Boyer, and... Uh, They'll keep a close eye on him. And Sunamura attempting a long field goal. This is from the 27. Oop, not going to go. He rushed that a little, and that'll end the game. So uh, Sunamura's field goal doesn't uh, work. The final score, Pleasantville, 34, Eastchester 7. Eastchester never did give up, but they just didn't have enough today. For Augie Lanzetta, Dave Gargani, this is Jerry Fishoff saying thank you. Uh, come down to uh, Tuckahoe High School, 1.30 uh, this coming Saturday, and uh, come support your local teams, both of them, Tuckahoe and Eastchester, and uh, as we mentioned before, uh, we'll be there uh, on sister station.